Welcome to DWS Market Update. First of all, I wish you a happy and healthy new year. In recent years, Europe has been the problem child of the global economy. Hard hit by the pandemic, it suffered more than other regions from the collapse of global supply chains. Then Putin's war against Ukraine was on top of that and with it skyrocketing prices and looming shortages of gas. Soon the lights would go out in Europe. In point of fact, the current situation in Europe developed much better than most feared. Gas continues to flow into Europe. The gas storages are well stocked and in all likelihood the natural gas now stored will be sufficient even for the coming winter. This is not least due to the fact that gas savings have been achieved. German industry in particular is consuming significantly less gas, in recent months around 20% less than in previous years. And the crucial thing is that it has been possible to cut back on this gas without corresponding drop in production. Of course there are individual sectors that are being hard hit by the massive rise in gas prices. But overall German industrial production is around 2% lower than in previous years. And there are no signs of weaknesses in the labor market either. In its forecast, the EU Commission assumes that employment will increase rather than decrease this year and next, and that wages and salaries will grow strongly. In addition, consumers are receiving massive support in form of government subsidies, which should also support consumption. Of course, there are still numerous risks and challenges for the European economy and the trees will not grow to the sky. So a strong winter onset or renewed supply chain problems in China can lead to problematic situations again. But in recent months, the incoming economic data has exceeded expectations time and again. This is mainly because expectations were too pessimistic. But this is, after all, the essence of our European story. It's not that brilliant economic development is underestimated, but rather that economic difficulties are vastly overestimated. This is also reflected in the capital markets. Gaining 11% over the past six months, the European equity index stock 600 has performed much better than the S&P 500 with around 3%. And this could well continue. Measured by the price earnings ratio, European stocks are still trading at a discount to their US counterparts that is too high by historical standards. We do expect a recession in the US and also in Europe, but the European one should be mild, in particular when compared with the pessimistic expectations. With this relatively positive picture for Europe, I say goodbye until next time.